This article caught a lot of people's attention, and not necessarily in a good way. It's interesting. It seems like one outlet will write an article, then several other outlets will just copy it nearly word for word. Maybe try to make the title a little more clickbait. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've seen a really good H.I. Sutton article, and soon after, popular mechanics putting out nearly the exact same article on the exact same topic, just with a comical level of clickbait for the title. But it's one thing to title an article to grab the viewer or reader's attention. Advertising rates are down, and there's more competition than ever, so you have to find a way to stand out. But it's a whole other thing to mislead them. No, the Air Force did not admit the F-35 has failed. It likely isn't going to fully replace the F-16, as originally stated, but I can't see how that can merit classifying an entire aircraft as a failure. But let's take a look. But first, the sponsor, NordVPN. You've heard you should get a VPN, but maybe you thought nothing bad would happen to you and you don't have anything to hide. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't matter anymore. Any credit card you've ever used online, or even just your own online activities are all extremely valuable. Hackers and companies make billions off gathering each. So when choosing a VPN, you wanna make sure you get the best. They are not all the same. And the best out there, at least in my opinion, NordVPN. They have every feature you could possibly want. They have over 5,500 servers in 59 different countries you can connect to. They allow peer-to-peer -peer sharing, unlimited bandwidth, double data encryption, up to six simultaneous connections from six different devices, and much more. They also won last year's Best VPN Award, and they're always highly recommended by the experts. And they have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you're not satisfied, you simply get your money back no problem. So go and use my link in the description. With it, you get a huge discount, plus an additional month for free. Go to nordvpn.com covert, and use our coupon covert at checkout. Again, NordVPN. So is it a failure? Well, it depends on how you define failure. Just failing to replace one aircraft, the F-16, or meaning the whole F-35 program has failed and will be scrapped. It could also depend on how you define the word replacing. Does it mean completely getting rid of every last F-16 and replacing them with F-35s? Or simply replacing the F-16 as the main, modern fighter in the Air Force's inventory, while still retaining older aircraft which will take on a backseat role? This is something that will almost certainly happen, as in a few years, they will have more F-35s than F-16s. If you consider the F-35 a failure because it is not fully replacing the F-16, that could be like saying the F-15 was a failure because they built F-22s. Every 20, 30 years or so, new technology develops to the point where they have to build a new aircraft. The F-15 first flew in 1972. The F-22 first flew in 1997, but initial plans to replace the F-15 and build what became the F-22 began in 1981 just nine years after the F-15's first flight. The F-35 first flew in 2006, so beginning to discuss the needs for a new fighter now, in 2021, 15 years after the F-35's first flight, you could even make the argument that, therefore, the F-35 is more successful than the F-15. Now, I'm not at all saying that is the case, but it shows that they are always looking ahead. But even if a new program for a new fighter was started today, which it hasn't yet, and they set out the requirements, It'll almost certainly be 10 years, probably even more, before a design wins and the aircraft takes flight. And then possibly another 5 to 10 years before it actually enters operational service. And by then, it's possible F-16s will have been fully replaced by F-35s. The F-16 was actually designed to replace the F-4. Despite that, the F-4 was still used by the US for another 20 years. In fact, the F-4 was still in operational service when plans for replacing its replacement, the F-16, with the eventual F-35, began. And this isn't unusual. Programs like these often change requirements and shift roles all the time throughout development and even while in operational use. The F-16 was originally designed to be strictly a fighter. Later on in the program, it became a fighter bomber, or a multi-role aircraft, with the ability to carry weapons to attack targets on the ground as well. So, if you go by these standards, you could probably make the claim that every fighter aircraft ever built was a failure. But I don't care to defend the F-35, although I know it might seem that way. It certainly has a lot of issues, and even when everything is working perfectly, it shouldn't be your only tool. I've always thought that going with all stealth aircraft is not a smart idea. I even said that at the end of the Israeli F-35 video just a few weeks ago. Having only stealth aircraft makes everything extremely expensive in every way imaginable. They cost a ton of money to build, maintain, and operate, which then means you can't afford as many of them, which means losing one becomes a much bigger loss. Also, the propaganda expense inflicted by losing one is high as well. General Brown summed it up by saying you don't drive your Ferrari to work every day. It's for specific, special occasions. Same is true with these state-of-the-art stealth aircraft. You don't need F-35s for every mission, like fighting the war in Afghanistan. Sort of like drones in a way. The MQ-9 Reaper could never operate and survive against an enemy with modern air defenses. 
it's way too slow, not at all agile, and doesn't carry any countermeasures. But for a war like that in Afghanistan, it's perfectly suited. But going back to the article, its basis for saying the F-35 failed is because the Air Force's Chief of Staff, General Brown, stated that he wants to begin to study different options for the future. Part of that is developing a new light fighter to replace the F-16. Light fighters are smaller in size and mass, which typically makes them more maneuverable and less expensive to produce. However, they typically don't have the range and payload capacity as heavy fighters. The F-16 is technically a light fighter, with the F-15 being the heavier fighter. Russia has the same with the MiG-29 and the heavier Su-27. The F-35 could be considered a heavy fighter in the sense that even its lightest variant, the F-35A, is heavier than the F-15. So it could make sense to develop a new light fighter to complement the F-35, utilizing each in different roles. But the F-35 has been an incredibly ambitious program, maybe too ambitious. The amount of new and powerful sensors it has, and then trying to fuse all that data together, like the EOTS, its AESA radar, electronic warfare system, its distributed aperture system of six infrared cameras across the aircraft that allows the pilot to actually see through the aircraft and what's going on directly below him. Data links, its helmet-mounted display system, and others gives the pilot such a level of situational awareness that is currently impossible with any other aircraft in the world. Getting all those to work together perfectly has been a major challenge, and it's been one of the biggest problems with the F-35, causing high cost overruns and long delays. And those long delays are likely making it even more expensive as well, as technology has been advancing so quickly that the original software and hardware back in 2006 when it first flew has changed dramatically. Imagine using a computer from 2006 today. Also, trying to get all those systems to work properly and fit inside an airframe that has to be shaped in a way that is low observable or stealthy is incredibly difficult, and some of these issues might not be solved anytime soon. This has all created an extremely expensive aircraft. What was originally planned to be an affordable aircraft turned out to be the most expensive fighter ever developed. Prices jump around depending on how many are bought each year, but on average it's still costing over $100 million each. But the US Air Force's F-35s were originally planned to replace the F-16, which was also extremely ambitious at the time. Some of that was likely overstatements to try to sell the program to Congress. However, as the program grew, new requirements were added, further changes needed to enable those new requirements, and much more, it became clear this was impossible. They are very clearly two different aircraft, used for two different reasons. One designed from the ground up to dogfight and be highly maneuverable to succeed, the other relying on remaining unseen and using its unmatched level of situational awareness to succeed. Each one is valuable, and there's more than enough reason to have both. So is the F-35 a failure? Well, it comes down to semantics. How you define the word failure? Did it fail to replace the F-16 as it was originally designed to do? Yes, but that seems to be a pretty weak argument alone to call the aircraft a failure. The entire F-35 program is not being scrapped, throwing out the aircraft it currently operates and not buying anymore. The Defense Department's tactical air strategy, TACAIR, has always been, and still is today, to supplement 4th gen fighters with modern 5th gen aircraft like the F-22 and F-35. And they are still buying F-35s, and will continue to do so for years to come. 